Okay, hope you had a good few weeks. Sorry for the delay. Back to work on the cyber drop. The door has arrived. I've ordered this door. It's the Challenger door from LCI Lippert. Yeah, it's packed really nice. They even put your name on it, make you feel real special. I'm gonna use the box to trace and then cut out the template. That'll transfer onto the cyber drop sidewall and cut out the hole. Garage isn't so well lit, so I'm just using my cell phone here to make sure I stay right on that line. Gonna be bouncing around a bit here today. Meanwhile, trying to figure out where to put the window, situating it from left to right. As you'll see on the inside, I've got a little bit of wiggle room. Ended up deciding to just center it under the peak above my head there. I think that looks good. This template I just cut out of Coroplast traced it around the window frame and now I will trace that out and then create trace that out. I'll drill my pilot holes and then from the outside I'll use my jigsaw to cut out the hole. Looks good, eh? It's the moment of truth! Alone, quietly, at night, in my parents' garage. Will there be glory? Glory there shall be. Yeah, I'm pretty happy uh, with that. I guess I've been making so many mistakes that I'm just thrilled when something goes right the first time. Now I'm going to cut out these little pieces of insulation. I'm going to stick them in there, and um, that's going to form the frame. The interior trim ring screws from the inside into the window, and that s squeezes together, and... That's how you install it. I'm using 3M77 here to do a test for my floor material. I'm supposed to let it wait at least 30 seconds after spraying until it gets a little tacky. Apparently though, you have up to 30 minutes to actually join the surfaces. That's what it says on the can. This sandwich composite material is composed of two layers of plywood, quarter inch thick, with three quarter inch rigid foam in between. I'm really hoping it's gonna be strong and I can use it for my floor instead of the core plast. Okay, so the next morning, let's see how it feels. Oh, that feels pretty, pretty rigid. Uh, let's put it over a span and stand on it. This is not very safe, but my confidence is growing by the second with this stuff. I'm 236 pounds, and I don't know if you can see any flex at all in there. It is solid. Whoa! Wow! Wow! That's all I can say is wow. Yeah, if I build another one of these, I might even consider just doing entirely sandwich composite construction. Probably don't even need a frame. Back to the window. Just getting things lined up. This side's gonna be down, so I'm removing these weep hole plugs. That's what they're called. To create a flush surface for the trim ring, I had to rudder out a channel about a half inch wide, quarter inch deep, with a flush cut trim rudder. Probably my favorite tool. For the existing screw holes on the ACM panel, I've decided on JB Weld Plastic Weld. So what you do is you just cut off a piece like this and then you roll it in your fingers until it's a uniform color that activates the chemicals and then you stick it in the hole. I'm putting it on from the inside out so there's less material on the outside. I don't want a big patch showing. Okay, I've got my door template, getting it all lined up. And then I'm gonna drill some pilot holes, go around to the outside, cut it out with my skill saw. So I'm gonna measure from the bottom to the top drill holes to see how level I'm running. Everything looks good. Can't really see here, but I took a lot of time to make sure this was lined up properly. And after cutting the hole out initially, had to go back and forth with the door a few times just to make sure where the, the latch on the inside of the frame 
uh, just to make sure it all fit properly. Okay, a couple things to note about the Challenger door is they've got these connection plates on the frame. So if you're cutting your cutout quite close, you're gonna have to cut out some more for that, which I just did. And then, this is interesting. It's got these two spikes, self-tapping screws. Looks like number eight, they come in about three eighths of an inch. So you're gonna have to make a little cutout to allow those to go in so it can go flush against the wall. All right, so I cut a couple of little shims out of the aluminum composite panel, just these tiny little strips, same thickness as the actual panel. And I've just taped them on top there. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna lift the door off. I don't want it resting right on the, the cutout opening. So I've got about a little less than half an inch to play with from top to bottom. So I'm gonna split the difference between the top and the bottom so I have a gap all the way around so the material has room to move with the temperature and etc. So it'll be floating and then I'll fasten it and secure it with screws. I'm gonna to try to get them into the frame. However, I think the door flange may be too wide and it's gonna put the screws out too far. I'm not gonna hit the, the metal little stud here. Because I didn't wanna wait for the door to arrive, I didn't weld in the final top and bottom support frame pieces that are gonna go with the door. So I've got them here. And I'm gonna to try to use JB Weld, plastic weld, to secure that. I'm really curious, I'm gonna do a test overnight to see if you can weld aluminum with JB plastic weld. It says metals, and that should make for a nice solid door. So that's the game plan. We'll see how it goes. This is the JB Weld Plastic Weld. Didn't uh, work, wasn't strong enough in the end as you'll see in a moment. So I ended up using the JB Weld original. Anyways, back to the floor composite paneling. I'm gonna write a, the test is successful, so I'm gonna create my, my floor pieces now. And I'm using 3M77 adhesive spray once again. I did find if I put it on too thick onto the actual rigid foam, it would start to melt the foam just a little bit. Not too bad, but something to think about if you're doing this yourself. Okay, first task of the day. Let's see how well this held up. It's supposed to be 700 PSI. I've left it overnight. It's supposed to cure in about an hour, so it should be plenty as strong as it's going to get anyways. Okay, here's the test. Oh! I will not call that a successful test. Yeah, you'll see later the JB Weld original did uh, hold up a lot better. Okay, back to the floor panels. Really looking forward to getting this part behind me. The cross members you see here, originally my plan was to put a battery in between the, the one right in front of me and to my right. So it's not the same level as the one at the back. Just used a couple pieces of coroplast, tape them down to make sure everything is level. I'm just ruddering out the pieces that overlap the ACM panel on the wheel well sections on the inside. Again, to keep everything nice and level. Little test, feels good. I'm really impressed with this sandwich construction method. Yeah, it turned out great. That said, I am gonna weld in a couple of supports, just lengthwise near the back. And you'll see later some tabs on the sides and that'll be it. The floor will be finished. I decided to assemble the floor in two pieces originally, but later on I actually cut this piece and the other piece right down the middle so that I could get it out of the trailer if I ever needed to. Again, using the flush cut rudder to cut out channels where the floor is overlapping the ACM panel on the inside of the wheel wells, just to keep everything nice and level. The floor bed is a little longer than eight feet, so I've just got one little piece here to finish it off. Nice. Okay, finally got the floor done, but yeah, I wish I thought this through at the design phase. I don't know why I was thinking, oh, I'll just throw some Coroplast down. But here's the floor, all installed. 
there's no sag and to prevent the wood from rotting or getting soft my idea is i'm going to use neoprene stripping wherever the wood is exposed to the aluminum bare members underneath i'm going to cover it up with that neoprene closed cell foam stripping and my hope is that that should avoid any surface to surface contact condensation transfer hang an arm out how's it going neighbor at the rv park I remain undecided if I can bring my dog on this world adventure that I have planned. However, I did buy a baggage access door that Stella will fit through, so we'll see. So here's my mom helping me install the window, just applying pressure while I screw the self-tapping screws through the trim ring and squeezing the two pieces together, and that's it. Next up, I'll give you a look at how I applied the JB Weld Original. It's really messy, and if you do get it on your skin, it will burn and itch. I don't know why I didn't believe them, but now I do. I'm using chopsticks here, and I would recommend maybe a brush or something better. But it's supposed to be 5,000 PSI or something crazy like that. So I'm gonna do some handheld and try to catch you up on what I've been up to. Finished installing the door and the window, and I put in all the insulation on the sides. The floor is finished. I ended up cutting the floor into pieces in case I need to take it out later. I decided that was the right way to go. And I ended up welding on these, I sorry, not welding, but gluing on these little support pieces using JB Weld Original. Wasn't sure how strong it was going to be, but I mean, I'm very impressed. I push as hard as I can. They're not going anywhere. That's a success with the JB Weld. If you're thinking about can it weld aluminum, I mean, I haven't stood on it yet, but I think it'll be okay. Those black strips that you see throughout are closed cell foam, neoprene stripping with adhesive backing. Just got them off Amazon, quarter inch thick, and I put them over top of the aluminum frame so that I didn't get any condensation coming through and dripping into the interior, hopefully. Uh, it's not exactly airtight. I might tape them, I'm not sure yet. But it worked out well because as you can see, my insulation is one inch thick and my framing is only three quarter inch square tubing. So it comes in a quarter inch and this is a quarter inch thick. It ends up making it all nice and flush. I did buy this whole liner fabric, which is a nice, you know, resilient, robust fabric. Should wear very well. And I was planning on doing the whole inside. Not sure about the ceiling, but the interior walls with this and I just got this off Amazon as well we'll see I haven't made up my mind yet because I'm not exactly sure how to glue this on the XPS foam I've been testing different adhesives um, the latest one is this gorilla spray adhesive and as you can see it chews into the foam the 3m 77 adhesive does not it stays on the surface, so it's much better. But I did a test patch like this with a 3M adhesive and it peeled off fairly easily. So yeah, I'm still not sure what to do here. Maybe I need to paint the foam with something to seal it and then spray the adhesive on something. Um, but as you can see, like it just peels off too easily. So I don't feel comfortable using that. I gotta figure out that problem. It's on my to-do list. That's it for now. Next week I'll have a video, hopefully uh, wrapping up the enclosure and we'll get on to some fun testing. See if this thing actually works. Like and subscribe. See you next time.